Tapering will make or break your marathon. Get it right and you'll hit race day in peak condition. Fit, fresh and ready to PB. Get it wrong and you'll show up tired or undertrained. I'm a sports scientist, physiotherapist and former professional triathlete. And in this video, I'll break down the science and the exact step-by-step -step plan for the perfect taper. But before we get into the plan, let me explain what a taper really is. Because most people get this part wrong. So think of your training as making the perfect cake. You've done all the prep mixed the ingredients, heated the oven and let it bake. But if you leave it in the oven for too long or poke at it all the time, then it will collapse or dry out. Basically, you ruin it before it's ready. On the other hand, if you take it out too early, it's all doughy and falls apart. It might look done on the outside, but it's not ready to be served. Tapering is that final step, when you pull out the cake just at the right time, so it's ready to be served just as the guests arrive. In running, that means hitting your peak fitness just in time for race day. It means you dial back your training the right way before your race, you still move, but you just move less. A scientific meta-analysis from 2023 defined tapering as a strategy used before a race where you gradually reduce training to peak at the right time. So that begs the question, when should we taper? Or put another way, how much training should we do before a taper is necessary? The meta-analysis found that combining tapering with a period of overload training before the taper led to greater performances. So what does that mean? It means that your body rebounds. It's a phenomenon known as super compensation. It works like this. You train hard, so your body gets tired and your performance drops. Then you recover, but your body doesn't just return back to normal it returns stronger than before for a short period. And that is known as super compensation. It's basically your body going, man, that was tough. I need to evolve so I can handle that better next time. Which is exactly what the right taper is designed to take advantage of, to help you get that super compensation effect just at the right time. But you need to work hard first for the super compensation to kick in. Now that we understand what tapering really does, the next question is, well, when do we start to taper. Here's what the science say about when you benefit most from a taper. You've gone through at least four to six weeks of progressive overload. You're training at a moderate to high intensity and frequency. You feel accumulated fatigue or are peaking for a specific event. So if your training didn't push you to a point where taper is necessary, maybe work got in the way or maybe you got sick, then you should really just keep training and don't worry too much about it. Or you might just do a short mini taper of five to seven days of reduced volume leading into your race. But now you're probably wondering, okay, if I've trained hard, how close to my race day should I start my taper then? While there's no perfect number for everyone, the meta-analysis found that tapering for up to 21 days was effective with eight to 14 days showing the most significant improvements. In my experience, working with athletes of all levels, in general, the shorter the race, the shorter the taper. And for a full marathon, we usually get the best results when we do a taper of around 14 to 21 days. Meaning we start the taper two to three weeks before race day, but only if we've built significant volume and intensity. For shorter races or less intense training blocks, then usually seven to 10 days do the trick nicely. But the key takeaway is that if there's no overload, then there's no need for a taper. Recovery should match the level of training fatigue. Now we know how long before the race we should start to taper, but that begs the question, what does the optimal tapering strategy actually look like. The meta-analysis found that besides having a 21-day duration, there are four keys to the perfect taper. The first one is training volume. Reducing our training by 41 to 60% is the most effective. So as you can probably imagine, that's a lot less training. Key number two is training intensity. Now listen carefully, because this is where I see most runners go wrong because they think that tapering means easy running. But the meta-analysis found the opposite to be true. Maintaining our training intensity actually leads to better performances. So while we need to train less volume, 
then we should keep our training intensity. The third key is our training frequency. So basically how many times per week we run. The study found that keeping our training frequency is better than reducing the total number of training days. So if we normally run five days per week, then we should keep running five days per week and we should keep the intensity, but our overall volume should go down. Meaning we can only reduce one thing which is the time spent running. The fourth key is having the right type of taper. You see, there are two different types of tapering, a step taper and a progressive taper. A step taper means that you immediately cut volume and then you keep it low until your race. Think of it like turning off a light switch. So a sharp drop and then a plateau. An example of a step taper could be something like this. In the week leading into your taper, you run 50 kilometers or 31 miles. Then three weeks before your race, you reduce your volume to 25 kilometers or around 15 miles. Then two weeks before your race, you also run 25 kilometers or 15 miles. And in your race week, you reduce your volume to around 15 to 20 kilometers or around 12 miles plus your race. The advantage of the step taper is that it's super simple to implement and it's very easy for beginners. A progressive taper is also known as a gradual taper and it means that you gradually decrease your volume as the race approaches. Think of it like a dimmer switch, slowly turning down the training load. It usually follows a curve, so a big drop in the beginning and then smaller drops as we approach race day. Let's say your hardest training week was 50 kilometers or 31 miles, then an example of a progressive Progressive taper or gradual taper could be something like this. Three weeks out, you do 35 kilometers or around 22 miles. Two weeks out, you do 25 to 30 kilometers or 15 to 17 miles. And then in race week, you do 15 to 20 kilometers plus your race. So which approach is better? The meta-analysis found that even though both progressive and step tapers are effective, the progressive taper will give you slightly better results. So to get the best results, the best approach is to think about about your taper as a dimmer switch, slowly lowering the volume the closer you get to your race. Now let's try to put all of this information together into a 21 day science backed perfect tapering protocol. Let's say we run five times per week with our maximum week being 50 kilometers or 31 miles. In the weeks leading up to the taper, we should accumulate some training fatigue by doing some progressive overload so we enter the taper a bit tired. Then 21 days before our race, we start a progressive taper. We keep the intensity and we keep training five days per week, but we reduce our total volume by reducing our total time spent training. If you do any strength training, we do the same. We keep it in, but we reduce our overall volume. Even though there's no research to support it that I know of, I've found that skipping strength training in the week leading up to the race leads to better results. And it's really just to avoid any unnecessary fatigue or any unnecessary pains. Then we start our taper and from 21 days before the race to 14 days before the race, we only run 35 kilometers or 22 miles. This is when most runners start to panic that they'll lose their fitness because it's way too early. But don't panic. Stick to the plan. From 14 days before the race to 7 days before the race, we reduce our volume even more, down to around 25 kilometers or up to 30 kilometers or 15 to 17 miles. This is usually when you start to feel heavy and a bit demotivated because you're worried that you can't keep up with that pace you set for yourself on race day. And this is where a ton of runners will make a huge mistake they do a hero session, meaning they go out and try to hit their race pace because they want to see if they can do it. But please don't do that. That last minute confidence booster, well, in the best case scenario, it leads to you not getting that super compensation at the right time. And in worst case, it will get you injured. Stick to the plan. It's there for a reason. During race week, we reduce the volume to 15 to 20 kilometers or around 12 miles. Another tip I want to include is to do your last bit of intensity at least three days before your race. Nothing crazy. It could just be three by two minute hard intervals or three by five minutes at race pace with a three minute break. Then the day before the race, do an easy shakeout run. Not because it will make you better, but just to loosen up and settle the nerves. And then you hit race day just as that super compensation effect is at its peak and you're ready for a new PB. But none of this matters if you've been training the wrong way. So if you want to maximize your taper and run the race of your life, you should watch this video next.